going on, guys? Today I wanted to go over something that I've used for a very, very long time, and that is Equity Feed. I'm going to start doing a couple part series where I go over a scanner that I use for different things. So the first one will be an unwinder and continuation type scan. I'll go over some of the things that I use for news and then some other things that I used to use for the OTCs, which also can be attributed to NASDAQ to find some decent runners and put the right stocks on your radar, being able to minimize the amount of trades that you're watching and just really give you the types of trades that you actually want to look at. So the first one that I'm going to go over, especially in this market, is very important. Typically, I like to look for breakdowns or continuation type patterns. When the breakdown, I refer to as potentially unwinding. An unwinding would be like a daily chart where it starts to break big support, and it just does a move that is not like the rest of the days. For example, if it's normally in a, a $1 type range, all of a sudden it breaks down and it goes down one, another buck, another buck, another buck, and it actually has a 3 or a 4 or $5 type unwind day. So this is a typical scan that I would use to find something like that. And again, on the flip side, if it's breaking out and it's going through chart resistance, then you might start to get that dollar, two dollar, three dollar type move, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stocks that have abnormal range on any given day relative to how they trade prior. That's where the edge is. That's where the momentum or the, I guess, lack of momentum on the unwinders comes from. And for me, that's the edge. I can scale into those types of trades. And that's what I want to be showing on my radar every single day. I don't want to see a million stocks popping up and then try to have to sift through which ones are the best. This one produces enough, but not too much. You still need to look at the daily chart just to kind of see where it is in its range. If it's something that's stuck in a 50 cent or a dollar type range, then it's probably something that I would ignore. So first and foremost, you're going to go over to find stocks. And for those of you guys that are not familiar with Equity Feed, you can do a lot of different things. Market View allows you to basically pull up any of the names that are moving in the morning. You can basically sort it different ways based on if it's up the most percentages. You can do different filters with volume trades and, and all that type of Filtration, um, you can do new streamer, stock scanner, and you can build different filters and also be alerted for certain types of stocks. It'll pop up. I think you can email. But for me, I'd prefer just to have it pop up on my screen. Other than that, you've got charts, time and sales, watch list, level two quote. But the goal for me today is to go over how to build this particular watch list that I like. And for me, that is hitting the trading alerts. And the trading alerts, I'm going to pull this up. And I'm going to just put on NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and Amex. You can put on OTCs. It doesn't really pull up that many, especially in this market. But given that it doesn't pull that much up, I would recommend probably just putting it on there. If you don't trade them, then just pull it off. The next one, sometimes these are all selected. So the quick way to do it, just unselect all. And then usually I just go and click regular securities. You know, every now and then, maybe a D or an F type name, you know, goes and runs away from me and I miss it. And Q is the only other one that I would probably add on. But typically, I only have regular securities clicked. If Q names such as SHLDQ is running, if these types of names are running in this market, then I would probably add in the Q. But we could just keep it on there for now. Uh, as far as the filters, typically I go in and I put a range from either a dollar, three dollars, 50 cents, whatever it may be to a level that you want to see. So Obviously, the wider it is, the more results you're going to get. A lot of times, I also will do two of these. So, for example, I might do a 1 to 10, and then I'll do a 10 to maybe 50 or something like that, or 1 to 20, and then 20 plus. And you can do them side by side. That way, depending on what's moving in the, the current market, depending on what you're interested in, you can always just kind of have your eyes on one or the other. And then for current volume, this is something that personally, I'd rather trade liquid names. You're going to miss a lot of action, but I do have other scanners that will pick up momentum on the lower float type names. But for the stocks that I'm looking for, I want liquidity. I want a minimum of about a million shares traded. You can put 500,000. But personally, I just keep it at 2 million just because I don't really want to see anything that doesn't have much liquidity. And typically for trades, anywhere from 1,000, 5,000 plus, 
that's going to keep you in a name that is not just based on a newsletter alerting it and then it pops and then it drops. It's going to keep you in liquid type names. And a good way to do that is if you go back and just look at something like this, you can see how many trades are right here. So if you go back and look at you know, yesterday's and days like that, you can go and see, okay, well, how many trades? Okay, they had 20,000, 80,000, whatever it may be. So I think it's a good sticking point. It also means that the volume that might have originally put it on your radar was enough that you know it's not just one or two traders in the in the name, but it's actually a lot of orders going on. Um, and then lastly, current money volume. This is actually the amount that is. You know, if you were, if you were trading, um, if it had a million shares and it was an average price of seven dollars, that would be seven million dollars that was traded back and forth. Total volume. So you just take the share price times the volume, and then that's what this number is. So typically, I don't. Don't want to trade anything under you know half a million and a lot of times I've just put a million just because it keeps me out of the low volume type stuff sometimes I like to see the low volume stuff it depends on the market and obviously like I said we can do a different scanner for something like that where we can focus on lower float type names lower volume and have it alert us to that so those are the main things that I put on here and then you just do a filter filter now and then that saves and then the alert settings I like to keep show recurring highs and show recurring lows on because then that way it allows me to see if I miss it and it keeps on hitting 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 I want to I want to see that I want to see the one that just keeps on making lows and lows and lows and lows not just randomly here and there I want to see it so I don't miss it and uh, so that's the way to do that and then otherwise I just hit usually day highs 52 week highs, day lows, 52 week lows. You can put other things in here, sometimes like a 60 day breakout. It depends on how much you want to see. Sometimes I just throw in a few things like 15 days or 60 days price breakout. You can play around what works with you. If it, if it starts spitting up stuff that's useless to you, then, then just take it off. And then volume breakout, same thing. You can put same as the price breakouts and then block trades. Sometimes it's nice just to see a big block because what happens is you'll see on a chart there's a big block and then they start to walk it up from that point or there's a big block and it starts to fade off from that point. So that is how I structure my scan to basically find continuation plays. And whether that's the upside or the downside, it doesn't matter. It's going to show both. If you wanted to separate them, then you just wouldn't have the day lows in 52 weeks on, under this button. You'd basically clone this window and then put the lows on one and then put the highs on the other. So that's my unwinder and continuation type move. I do use other filters, but this is the main one that I like to see that keeps you kind of in the pulse of the market, I guess is the best word for it. So if you want to continually see what's going on, what's moving, what's hitting lows, what's breaking down, and has good liquidity, then this is probably a great filter to start with. As you progress later in the day, you can always change this to say like 5 million volume or 10 million volume, whatever jives with your personality and, and how you trade. The current trades you could move up to 20,000 or 50,000 and then the money volume should also go up. So, I mean, that's something that you can change. Typically, I don't just because there could be new trades that are starting up that are lower volume later in the day and I still want to catch those. So, I basically leave these settings throughout the day. The only other thing that I add in there is usually I put current day range of 30 cents just because I don't want the stocks that are typically in a, in a 5 or a 10 cent range during the day. I don't want to see any of those. So if 0 0.30, which is basically 30 cents of daily range, if that is producing too many results, just change it to fifth, just change it to a dollar, whatever you want to do. And obviously, if you're trading higher price names, for example, if you're trading 100 plus, if you wanted to put this scanner at 100 to 200, then obviously you'd probably want the range at something like three or four or so on and so forth. So again, one to 20, or what I typically do is just one to 50. It just depends on how well you can filter the noise out in your head. And like I said, you could split this and do one to 20 and then 20 to 50. And they just have them running side by side. But in an effort to save screen real estate, I usually just keep it on one and do it just like that. And then, like I said, current day range, 30 cents is typically something that I find pretty good. And you go filter now, and it's going to produce the results that you're looking for. So that's how I use Equity Feed in my day-to-day. -day. I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment, leave a question, and I am more than happy to help. 
I'm going to be doing a couple more of these throughout the next few months, and it'll be one scanner, one idea each time that I do a recording. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.